I'd like to welcome you to the Huber Machinery Museum here in Marion, Ohio. If this weren't the COVID time, we would be doing a field trip here together. But instead, since we can't be here together, I have arranged to have a socially distanced video production. Cameraman, of course, taking precautions and uh, I'll put the mask back on. We'll stay six feet apart and we'll take good care and we'll do our best to get you some footage. So this is a cardboard cutout of Ed Huber, the original person who uh, is responsible for so much in Marion, Ohio. The Huber Museum, Huber Machinery Museum contains material from the start of his career uh, through the company after he passed on. And we're going to look at several parts of it today, but particularly we're going to look at the technology in terms of social impact. And we're going to do some close looking, some object analysis of some of the specific things that he and his company are responsible for creating. I'd like to draw your attention to the wooden machine behind me, predominantly wood, a little bit of metal on it. This is from 1863, patented in 1882, and 165 years old, pretty darn good shape for so old. Uh, the paint has been redone, the varnish has been redone, but otherwise we're looking at the original wood. And this machine replaces the labor of 12 people. This would probably have been 12 men. Um, harvesting crops in the field, tra traditional crops like hay, uh, their cereals, grains. So Huber, uh, an incredibly inventive individual, uh, by the time he finishes his career, has over 100 patents. This is the first. This is the machine that started it all. This is a hay rake. Uh, invented his design in 1863 to 5, patented it in 18, 1882. He decides to make them after the war, the Civil War. And he comes to Marion, Ohio because he's heard from his fiance's brother that there's lots of terrific hardwood in Ohio. These days you don't think hardwood, hardwood forest in Marion. You don't think of Marion so much for the wood. But at that time, beautiful hardwoods were available and he could go to the wood lots and buy what he needed for his machines very cheaply. This is 165 years old. And aside from the paint having been renewed, it's still the original machine. This harvester, uh, hay rake replaces 12 people. And back in the day, that would have probably been 12 men. Uh, also, horses. And it becomes something that you can use, towed behind a horse or towed by two humans could pull it. And every time you came to the end of a row, its design would flip. You no longer have to make a great big loop and lose acreage and lose harvest and lose planting and lose seed in a great big loop of unused land. You come to the end of the row, you flip your harvester, and you can gather up the hay again. Now, it not only flips at the top with these red handles, which show which direction you're going, handle A, handle B, it also flips because of the way the metal catches and clasps are in the center. And so each of these tines is a long straight piece of wood, and in order to make them more durable and reduce the number of times you have to replace them, that's one long stick of wood that's been shaped on four sides in a mill, and then a hole has been cut. It's not two different tines each jammed in, it's a single long tine. And it flips and gathers up the hay, and then it flips again at the next row and drops the hay, and you get a hay row, which can then be gathered up into a hay bale or into a hay shock, older technology. If you want to see one of these working, there's a YouTube video that shows the Huber hay rake. You would think, it's so simple, it's so easy. Why hadn't someone done it? Well, they hadn't, for whatever reason. And hay rakes were still being lifted and moved manually, and people were still wasting uh, crop rows at the ends of it, their fields for every turn. And Huber had the idea that if he just put this reversible mechanism in, he could make some money. 1863, $5. $5 is real money in 1863. He sells 200,000 of them. Young Mr. Huber makes his first million before he's 26. And that first million was $1863. So this fabulous machine, so simple, so easy to build, so easy to repair in the field, gives him his first million and is the start of a company that lasts from 1863 to 1986. More than 100 years of Huber We'll see what he does with that money when we move on to look at some other things.